Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa arrived in Riyadh today after an invitation from the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, to participate in the inauguration ceremony of the 31st Al Janadriya Heritage and Cultural Festival, which is organised by the Saudi Arabian National Guard under the patronage of the custodian of the two holy mosques. His Majesty the King was received at King Khalid International Airport by the custodian of the two holy mosques, a number of their highnesses, princes and the Bahraini ambassador to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. In a statement, His Majesty King Hamid expressed pleasure in participating in the festival that is held annually for intellectuals, scholars and writers to discuss literary and cultural ideas. His Majesty commended the activities of the festival that aim to reinforce cultural identity and the generation's connection to their heritage, culture and tradition. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to the custodian of the two holy mosques for his support and patronage of the festival, which reflects the honourable image of Saudi Arabia. He highlighted the deep-rooted and historic relations between the two brotherly countries that are linked by kinship and a common destiny, noting the efforts of the custodian of the two holy mosques in defending Arab and Islamic causes. His Majesty also hailed the development of Saudi during the era of the custodian of the two holy mosques, wishing him and the people of Saudi Arabia further success and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa participated alongside his brother, the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, in the inauguration ceremony of the 31st Al Janadriya Heritage and Cultural Festival, organised by the Saudi Arabian National Guard under the patronage of the custodian of the two holy mosques in Al Janadriya in Saudi Arabia. The festival was attended by the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Subah, and guests from Saudi Arabia, GCC countries, and their Highnesses, princes, and officials. The ceremony started with the Saudi national anthem. His Highness Prince Matab bin Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Al Saud delivered a speech in which he welcomed the guests. The custodian of the two holy mosques honoured a number of Saudi figures and sponsors of the festival. The personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, said that the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, allocating half a day for sporting activities on the occasion of Bahrain's National Sports Day, will, as directing officials and government authorities to organise sporting activities during the event, affirms the aspirations of His Royal Highness to enhance cultural and sporting awareness in Bahraini society. His Highness highlighted that the goal of the Sports Day is not just to focus on sports, it also enhances the coexistence and teamwork between institutions, authorities and the people of Bahrain. He added that this day highlights the importance of sports in building the body and mind, which in turn leads to increasing productivity, creativity and positivity in the march of progress of the Kingdom. His Highness stressed the importance of organising events that highlight the importance of National Sports Day, saying that it's a day that includes all sporting entertainment, promotional, cultural and competitive activities. His Highness directed the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Youth and Sports Ministry and Bahrain Olympic Committee to organise a number of programmes to allow the participation of the whole of Bahrain society to participate in order to achieve the goals of the day aspired by the wise leadership. He added that the programmes should highlight the creativity and skills of the participants in various areas. Deputy Premier Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa received yesterday a number of ministers, senior officials, heads of diplomatic corps, dignitaries, clerics, businessmen and media personnel who congratulated him on the occasion of the wedding of Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa. They also wish Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa a life filled with joy and happiness, praying to the Almighty to bless the Al Khalifa family with abundant good health and happiness under the wise leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Deputy Premier expressed his thanks and appreciation to the scores of well wishers for their noble sentiments. <laughs>
Oh! 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the fourth Arab-Russian Cooperation Forum at the Foreign Affairs Minister's level, which was held today in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. The Foreign Affairs Ministers reviewed the results of the third session of the Arab-Russian Cooperation Forum and the work plan that aims to implement the forum's principles and goals. They also stated the importance of dialogue and cooperation between the two sides and discussed the latest updates in the region and a number of international issues of common interest. The final statements of the meeting hailed the results of the Russian Federation Days, which included an economic forum and events that reflects the Russian culture. The statement also praised the increasing economic cooperation between the state members of the Arab League and Russia, affirming the importance of developing Arab-Russian cooperation in various fields. The statement highlighted the importance of establishing relations between Arab countries and Iran on the principles of refraining from the use of force, preventing interference in internal affairs and respecting independence and sovereignty. The statement emphasized the importance of the GCC initiative, which was stressed in the letter of His Highness the Emir of Kuwait to the Iranian president, calling on Iran to deal positively with the initiative in order to enhance peace and security in the region. The statement went on to express concern over the lack of progress between the United Arab Emirates and Iran regarding the issue of the three Emirati islands, emphasizing the failure to find a peaceful solution to the conflict. The meeting emphatically condemned terrorism in all its forms, urging to counter it in a strict, unified and transparent manner. The statement also urged states to refrain from providing any form of support to terrorists. Regarding Palestine, the meeting affirmed its support for all initiatives that aim to find a peaceful and just solution for the Palestinian cause, according to international law, related international legitimacy resolutions and the Arab Peace Initiative of 2002. The statement stressed the importance of maintaining unity, sovereignty and independence in Syria, stating that the only possible solution for the Syrian crisis is in uniting all Syrian sides in a comprehensive political operation under the leadership of Syria, according to Security Council Decree 2254 of 2015. It also praised the Council's Decree 2336 of 2016 and the meeting between the Syrian government and the representatives of the armed Syrian opposition in Astana, Kazakhstan, discussing the current situation in the Republic of Yemen. The meeting asserted the significance of maintaining unity, sovereignty and independence in Yemen, hailing the efforts of the United Nations Special Envoy for Yemen, Ismail Oud Sheikh Ahmed. The uh, foreign affairs ministers condemned all unilateral measures outside the framework of legality that violate international resolutions. The Minister of Finance, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, signed two agreements on value added tax, that's VAT, and selective tax for Gulf Cooperation Council states. In the framework of the GCC agreement, which stipulated that the tax is applied simultaneously across countries in the GCC. The minister stated that Bahrain will implement the agreements after completing all constitutional and legal procedures by legislature. Sheikh Ahmed stressed that the GCC's unified VAT agreement and the GCC's unified agreement on selective taxation are not income taxes but will be applied to goods and services at a rate of 5% and will not include basic food, commodities, medicines and medical supplies. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Shog Mohammed. Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,296.66 points, marking a decrease of 7.04 points below previous closing. The decrease was in the commercial banks, investments and services sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial banks with 72% of total shares. 81 equity transactions took place with a volume of 3 million. 480,416 shares worth 689,805 Bahraini dinars.